your people, merciful God. Gather the longing, the lost and unsure. Gather your people, merciful God. Name us and claim us as yours. Surely you alone can save us. Pay our price with precious blood. Reaching through your great compassion, you lift up your people with love. Merciful God, gather the longing, the lost and unsure. Gather your people, merciful God. Name us and claim us as yours. Good morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This morning's Mass intention is for you, the parishioners of St. Catharines. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with these people? A little more, and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. If 
If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence. With thanksgiving, let us joyfully sing songs to him. If today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as at Mariba, as in the days of Massa in the desert. Where your father tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. 
though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Read to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, you are truly the Savior of the world. Give me living water that I may never thirst again. Glory to you, O Word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying I do not have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place of worship, the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, that the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, 
I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman, but still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him and because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritan came to him, they invited, when the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The gospel of the Lord. So we hear in the first reading from, for the third Sunday of Lent, the question posed to Moses by the Israelites in the desert, is the Lord in our midst or not? In this question, we come to a deeper understanding that the season of Lent calls us to look for ways to find the Lord in our midst. For this scrutiny, the first scrutiny, the cycle A readings are used, and today we hear from the fourth chapter of the Gospel of John. Today we hear the story of the Samaritan woman at the well. In today's readings, Jesus meets a Samaritan woman at a well and invites a dialogue with her with a simple request, give me a drink. This encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman falls into four parts. The Samaritan woman challenges Jesus. She recognizes Jesus as a prophet, and Jesus reveals to the woman his messianic identity. The disciples return, and the woman leaves to tell others of her belief in Jesus. And the Samaritans themselves recognize Jesus as the truly the Savior of the world. One of the interesting and ironic elements of the story occurs when the disciples, upon their return from town, fail to ask the woman, what are you looking for? This question is significant because these are the first words of Jesus spoken in the Gospel of John. The first words spoken by Jesus in each of the Gospels are different and central to the distinctive storylines of those Gospels. In John's gospel, true discipleship involves first and foremost bringing others to Christ. In this regard, the Samaritan woman models the ideal behavior of a disciple because once she believes that Jesus is the Christ, her response is to go into town and bring others from the town of Sychar in Samaria to Jesus. Ironically, the disciples, upon returning from town with no one but themselves, 
failed in their opportunity to evangelize, to bring others to Christ. Because of the woman's evangelization, the Samaritans came to recognize the Lord in their midst. Are we ever truly satisfied? Our technological world demonstrates that there is never enough. We are conditioned now to vigilantly be on the lookout for more. We shouldn't get too attached to what we have because the newest version of it will be on its way very soon. The lines for the iPhone, this is not a commercial. We always try to quench our thirst with our own designs. While seeking to approve ourselves, improve ourselves, and our world is a wonderful human motivator, it has to be approached with a tempered sense of who we are and what really is possible in this life. What we must realize is that the thirst that humanity possesses cannot really be quenched by the purely human and secular. Trying to do so will eventually leave us frustrated, exasperated, and anxious. We need to look for a deeper cistern and not a bigger boat. The deepest longings and desires of the human heart will only be touched when we pursue those things that capitalize on the three gifts that God gave us, faith, hope, and love. If our pursuits and endeavors serve to underscore and enhance those three things, we will find ourselves wanting less and possessing more. The water of new life, the water that God gives, is discovered when we stop exclusively looking for things and objects to satisfy us and more to, more to matters of the spirit and the heart. Faith, hope, and love are given freely to us by God. It is up to us to develop them. But we get, to, we, but we get so distracted and tempted by temporal things that seem more appealing and satisfying, at least at first. Even with the Lenten season that is given to us each year, we attempt to get a handle on our carnal desires by giving up chocolate, sweets, the extra glass of wine, or whatever superficial thing we think gives us pleasure. We become so immersed in getting rid of the sin and eradicating it rather than taking it one step further and understanding it and learning from it so that we won't repeat it. When God meets us at the well, our past, present, and future all converge, and we are presented with an opportunity to drink. We can turn and walk away, returning to the world of pretend and the superficial, or learn to do things differently, following a new and distinctive way and voice, God's voice. Ultimately, each of us is on his or her own way, in, in his or her own way, needs to be brought into check and forgiven then we will finally be satisfied in this life and the next. Today we celebrate the first scrutiny of our elect. Two weeks ago, he was elected by Bishop Estevez to be baptized and initiated into the Catholic Church at the Easter Vigil. 
Today he begins to uncover, heal all that is weak or sinful in his heart and to strengthen all that is strong and good through self-searching and our prayers for him so that when he approaches the font of baptism, he will have a deep resolve to hold fast to Christ and to carry out his decision to love God above all. Elect of God, Michael Metzger, come forward to the altar with your sponsor, kneel down and pray. We invite the assembly to stand. Let us pray for our brother Michael, whom the church has confidently chosen. May he successfully complete his long preparation and at the Paschal Feast find Christ in the sacraments. That, like the woman of Samaria, our elect may review his life before Christ and acknowledge his sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may ponder the word of God in his heart and savor its meaning more fully day by day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That he may learn to know Christ, who came to save what was lost, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That while awaiting the gift of God, he may long with all his heart for the living water that brings eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray hear our prayer. <clears throat> that he may sincerely reject everything in his life that is displeasing and contrary to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit, who searches every heart, may help him to overcome his weakness through his power and teach him the things of God and how to please him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that he may share with his friends and neighbors the wonder of his own meeting with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That his family also may put hope in Christ and find peace and holiness in him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we ourselves, in preparation for the Easter feast, may seek a change of heart, give ourselves to prayer, and persevere in our good works, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That throughout the whole world, whatever is weak may be strengthened, whatever is broken, restored, whatever is lost, found, and what is found, redeemed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the elderly, and the homebound, for those suffering from the coronavirus, for those remembered on the altar and on our online book of prayers, and for those recalled now in the silence of our hearts, that their souls may be refreshed by God's word and our care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Emily Austria, Eleanor Simengan, Marilee Chavez, Jeanette Hagensick, Vincent Ross, Rafael Santiago, Amelia Santiago, all those who have died from the coronavirus, especially those in our parish community, that they may be brought to the living waters of the Lord in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Father, you sent your Son to be our Savior. Grant that this elect who, like the woman of Samaria, first for, thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as he hears God's word and acknowledge the sins and weaknesses that weigh him down. Protect him from vain reliance on self and defend him from the power of Satan. Free him from the spirit of deceit so that admitting the wrong he has done, he may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus, in your merciful wisdom, you touched the heart of the sinful woman and taught her to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In the power of your name, which we call upon in faith, 
Stand by this elect and heal him. Rule over that spirit of evil conquered by your rising from the dead. Show your elect the way of salvation in the Holy Spirit, that he may come to worship the Father in truth. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My dear friends, today we journeyed to the well and there discovered that Christ Jesus is the living water that quenches every thirst. As your journey toward initiation continues, look to Christ to be the way that leads to freedom from sin. Be assured of our love, care, and prayerful support. We look forward to the day when you will join us at the table of the Eucharist. Now go in peace. Please be seated for our offertory. has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love Him, Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus, teach us the wisdom When pain and sorrow weigh us down, be near to us, O Lord. Forgive the weakness of our pain and bear us up within your peace, O Lord. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those who love Him, Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus, teach us the wisdom of God. Our lives are but a single breath. We flower and we fade, yet all our days are in your hands, so we return in love what love has made. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, what God has ready for those. Just the wisdom of God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness. We have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, the Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for, your own, for our own sins 
may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he trust for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks. And with the angels, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, and Felipe our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace from a distance. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
you would follow me, follow where life will lead. Do not look for me among the dead, for I am hidden in pain, risen in love. There is no harvest without sowing a praise. All that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would honor me, honor the least of these you will not find me dressed in finery my word cries out to be heard breaks through the world my word is on your lips and lives in your heart all that is hidden will be made clear all that is dark now will If you would speak of me, live all your life in me. My ways are not the ways that you would choose. My thoughts are far beyond yours, as heaven from earth. If you believe in me, my voice will be heard. All that is hidden. dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. If you would rise with me, rise through your destiny, do not refuse the death which brings you life. For as the grain in the earth must die for rebirth, though I have planted your life deep within my all that is hidden will be made clear. All that is dark now will be revealed. What you have heard in the dark, proclaim in the light. What you Whispers proclaim from the housetops. All that is hidden will be made clear all that is dark now will be revealed what you have heard in the dark proclaim in the light what you hear in whispers proclaim from the housetop God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me. Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. And with love everlasting you besiege me. 
In every moment of life or death you are. Before the word is on my tongue, Lord, you have known its meaning through and through. You are with me beyond my understanding. God of my present, my past, and future too. Although your spirit is upon me, still I search for shelter from your light. There is no The darkness is radiant in your light. For you created me and shaped me, gave me life within my mother's womb. For the wonder of who I am, I praise you. Safe in your hands, all creation is made new. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being thought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for the announcements. Please join us every Friday during Lent for Super Supper in the Family Life Center at 5 p.m. following the Stations of the Cross in the church starting at 7 p.m. This Friday, the soup will be offered by two of our parish neighborhood communities, St. Andrew and St. Matthew. Proceeds benefit Social Outreach Ministries. Thank you for your support. In the soup kitchen, of Clay County is open again. 
We need individual volunteers or a team of volunteers to help serve our needy in Orange Park. If you'd like to volunteer, please call Dennis Abbott at 904-238-3301. In attention, Annunciation families, Father Puga welcomes all of you and, coordinates in, and cordially invites Annunciation families to a meet and greet on Saturday, March 13th, beginning at the 9 a.m. Mass, followed by breakfast and a potluck in the Family Life Center. Please contact Anna Aguirre at 655-2389 if you plan to attend or would like to set up. And save the date for the parish work day, which is on Saturday, March 20th, beginning at 8 a.m. Thanks for your commitment with our parish. And please see the adoration update in our bulletin. All of us are invited to be members of our amazing group of adorers. And please take our bulletin in the entrance of the church for more information. Since I've already dismissed you, have a nice Sunday. <laughs> Oh, 